Hey everybody, Tom Ballator here with a walkthrough for problem number three in PSET 1. This problem is a really difficult problem. I think it's actually probably the hardest problem in the course. Not because it's the most complex or the longest, you'll have longer ones later, but something about the timing of it being in the very first PSET and the complexity of it, the way you have to think through things, make it really a, a bottleneck uh, for many students. I, for one, when I was taking the course the first time, I think I almost gave up on this one because I was like, forget this, this is taking too long. So what I'm gonna do in this walkthrough is hopefully give you um, two types of hints that should help. So the first one I will do is talk about some concepts from the lecture that um, I suggest you consider when solving this problem. So we'll talk about concatenation, we'll talk about comparison, we'll talk about some if and else statements. The other thing I'll do is I'll walk through some pseudocode because for this problem, Compared to any problem you've seen so far, the importance of writing pseudocode, I think, is paramount. So the problem I had was I just kept trying to code and I was just trying to beat the computer into submission with all these crazy indices and trying to keep track of things. Finally, when I stepped back and thought, what in the world am I trying to do here? Oh, not that hard, actually. So hopefully the pseudocode will give you some good hints about that. Okay, well, let's read the problem first. So what is it asking? Assume S is a string of lowercase characters. Write a program that prints the longest substring of S in which the letters occur in alphabetical order. So for example, if the string is this one, then your program should print out B-E-G-G-H. Okay, that's cool. Um, actually, let's zoom in here, take, take a look at this. It's This is harder to eyeball, isn't it, than before? Like, what is the longest alphabetical substring here? Well, yeah, I guess it is B-E-G-G-H. Maybe a simpler one is to look at this one, the A-B-C. There's three letters in a row that are in alphabetical order. And then B-C-D, excuse me. These are, sorry. These are also in alphabetical order. And I think the reason for showing this here is the specification says in case of ties, so both of these are three characters long, print out the first one. So in this case, you want to print out A-B-C and not B-C-D. A little little twist there that makes it a little bit more difficult, but it's nevertheless, it's it's a good problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously this problem may be challenging. We know <laughs> that's why we're here, right? Okay, so let's do this first. Let's go to Python Tutor and talk about some of the concepts that should be useful for this. Um, first of all, and maybe it's obvious to you from watching the, the, the lecture videos because Professor Grimson talks about it, but you can compare a character versus another character and find which one is in which alphabetical order. So what I mean by that, let's let's go back to our previous example here. We had, um, what was it, my string. Um, in this case, well, let's work with something else. Let's say um, marmot. Okay, that's gonna be the string this time. And in this case, okay, loop over it again here. So for letter in my string, let's do this. Um, let's print out the letter. So this is nothing new from before, just to remember what for loops do like this. We can go through here and it's gonna print out M-A-R-M-O-T, and that's it. Okay, nice stuff. Remember we had another way of doing this too? We use the range right here. So let me just uh, rewrite that. So for um, so for some I, let's say in range, well, let's see, Marmot is six long, so we could just say six right here. A better way of doing that probably would be to say the length of my string, so then you don't have to hard code that. Let's go with that using the built-in len function, which calculates the length of a object. Okay, and then what do we wanna do? Let's print out the i's here. Okay, so just to refresh you here, this is not gonna print out M-A-R-M-O-T, but rather it's gonna print out integers starting at zero all the way up to, but not including six. So zero, two and including five is six. That's the range that we're looking at here because this is, well, the length of that is six. Okay, so you've seen that before in problem set or problem number two. If you haven't watched the walkthrough for that, well, go watch that first and then come back. Nevertheless, that's what we've got right here. Okay, so let's do some comparisons here. Um, you know, for example, if we were comparing int integers, what we could say is, um, let's say if uh, 10 is greater than eight, then, oh, print, I don't know, greater, something like that. Okay, is that what's that gonna print here? It's gonna print greater. Yeah, because 10 is greater than eight. 
Now, the interesting thing here that might surprise you is you can also do this with letters. So let's say, is B greater than A? Well, yeah, alphabetically, yeah, it is. No way, yeah, way, it does work that way. That's cool, right? Um, if you said, is it less than A? Well, no, because it's not, so therefore the program just ends. So you can actually compare characters. I didn't know that, now you know it, and you're gonna have to use that in this problem. Um, the other thing, let's do this. Let's take up here in, um, oh yeah, yeah, comment this back in. Let's do this. Let's look for all the characters in Marmot that are greater than, let's say, something. So if if uh, this my string index i is greater than, oh, I don't know, p, let's say, then let's print out the character, whatever it is. So that'll be my string uh, i. There it is. Okay, so the M, the A are not greater than P, so those won't get printed. The R is, let's see what happens here. Okay, going through this. Ah, uh -huh, okay, the R gets printed, and then probably the T at the end should get printed too. Awesome, okay, so we could do that with an arbitrary word, for example, marmot right here. Let's do this, instead of actually printing the things out, let's somehow remember them. This is one of the other key concepts here, in addition to comparison, we want to talk about concatenation, okay? So how about this? Let's make a new variable. Remember, we can create variables if we want, and then we can do things to those variables. They can change. That's why they're called variables. But let's call this my new string, um, and let's just make this an empty string. So those double quotes with nothing inside means it's a string, but it doesn't have any characters in it yet. And let's do this. If the character is greater than p, then let's concatenate that character onto my new string. Okay, let's see how that works. So my new string should get the original value of my new string plus whatever this is. This I'm just going to copy this here, my string i. Okay, so let's see how that works. Um, okay, stepping through here. Oh, did you see that? My new string just went up to R. Okay, continuing on here, let's go to the end here. Boom, the T gets added on. It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, now I'm gonna actually change this. I don't like that syntax, so I'm gonna say plus equals, because, well, we wanna be succinct, and that's exactly the same way of doing that. So you can imagine right here that, um, well, we're doing some comparisons with strings, a lexicographic order, that's great. We're doing concatenation. Another thing that you'll be finding probably in this um, P set is if something is true, if something is indeed in a certain order, you wanna do something. Otherwise, you wanna do something else. Do something else. So the third thing that's a little bit different in this problem is this uh, a, a bit more complex conditions. Earlier, we only really had if statements. If it was a vowel, if it was a bob. In this case, well, if it's maybe in order, maybe if it's not, otherwise do something else. 